welcome to the uh, November meeting of the Southampton Village Planning Commission. Uh, can we start with a um, resolution to approve the October minutes? Yeah, I'll make the motion to approve okay. the minutes. So Second. moved. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, welcome to the uh, Planning Commission. Those of you who listened, who had an opportunity today to listen to the um, Southampton Press um, uh, panel um, heard um, basically a, an hour and 40 minute conversation about all the topics we've been talking about here in the last few years. Um, so our, the agenda that we've been working on is one that's getting you know, really a lot of attention from the tr tr trustees. Um, and as we start this new era, um, I think everyone knows, but just to make sure, um, there are gonna be some new members coming on to the commission. Pam Gilmartin, who is on today, is the first one. Um, hello, Pam. Pam. Hi. And there'll be others coming on. Um, and um, Eldon Scott, who's been a member of the commission for a while, <laughs> not, not, not as long as it, Eduardo or I, but I think, I think probably the third longest. Um, Eldon is gonna become uh, the new chair of the commission. So congratulations to- Congratulations. Eldon. What's happening to you? I'm, <laughs> I'm going to um, help uh, Eldon out, but I'm not gonna be chair and um, I will gradually phase off I've had my 12 years. <laughs> so, um, Been that so, long already? My goodness. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, so I wanted to uh, talk today um, and then throw it open. Um, as those of you who watched the panel today saw, um, at one point the mayor uh, said, and he was really seconded by all the tr trustees, the question with a sewer is no longer if, it's when and how. Um, and so I think um, the issue of wastewater treatment is really now one that everyone is very focused on. It was at least half of the discussion on the panel today. Um, and um, as I think everyone on the commission knows, we were asked by the trustees um, actually um, really starting under uh, Mayor Irving's um, uh, to tenure to um, re-examine uh, the wastewater tre 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 treatment issue and come up with a plan to move it forward. Um, and uh, H2M, which had done the original study, was asked to re-evaluate uh, re re their study. And when the new mayor and trustees came in, a particular focus for them was coming up with a plan that would allow um, the uh, core of the village business district to be serviced uh, in an expedited manner. Um, so um, they've been working on a plan uh, on their report for, for several months, good deal of back and forth. Um, they, um, at the same time as, uh, as uh, and this was at our September special meeting, there was a presentation by the Light Tower Group, which is a private financing group, um, which has made a proposal to the village to finance a um, sewer system as a, in effect, as a private utility, which the village would lease. Um, and that pro proposal assumes that they would utilize the existing um, plant at the hospital, at Southampton Hospital, um, at least for first phase and then second phase, either um, use whatever finally gets built at the Southampton, um, SUNY Southampton campus or at, at elsewhere. Um, we have been looking for a while at at, at potential sites. Mark Shifford, who really runs this issue for the commission, had um, brought to the commission a potential site um, at the intersection of um, uh, North Sea Road and County Road 39. 
um, which is currently owned by the cemetery and the Southampton Town Fire District. Um, the report found that was an excellent site. Um, and um, so the new draft talks about the two, um, and, and, and I should say the report also looked at all the other sites that the village owned, um, and thanks to Gary Gillespie for his help, and then also looked at other existing facilities within the village, such as the facility at the Rehabilitation Center. Um, they found, number one, that the only existing f facility that was usable potentially was the hospital. And then secondly, um, did not find another site that met the criteria in the manner that the site at County Road 39 did. Um, so they've, done, they've, they've provided an evaluation of those two sites. There are policy issues that I think ultimately need to be addressed by the trustees which is whether they're comfortable um, using a private utility model. Um, there's an issue that can only be addressed by the hospital, which is whether the hospital is prepared to enter into an agreement for their facility to be used and under what circumstance. Um, and then there are obviously cost issues that would be the next phase, although we've got some preliminary calculations. So, um, we're being asked to um, expedite, as those of you who saw the panel today may have heard, to expedite getting this report to the trustees so that they can start the process. Um, but before we do, I know, Mark, you had a number of comments, some of which we probably should talk about tonight. Um, and then I, I know there's members of the public who will have comments, and I assume other commission members might have comments. So, Mark, do you want to start? I'll start, and I think Bob Essay also had comments on the Light Tower report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, when I reviewed the, the the study from or the, re, the draft report from H two M, I really thought that uh, some of their assumptions and how they calculated the flow uh, needed to be reviewed. You know, I thought that there. Uh, their uh, comparison with Lindenhurst and the comparison with Patchog um, don't really apply to the village. We have in the village very strong uh, zoning regulations that will definitely control uh, any potential development and limit uh, this type of development. And uh, so I think that uh, their flow calculations and the sizing of the potential uh, plant uh, should definitely be uh, reviewed. Uh, the other smaller potentially than the flows they're mentioning, or yes, the flow that they are mentioning, I think, in my view, is uh, exaggerated. It's way too high to what potentially can, will be developed uh, in the village. I mean, the, also the factors, the way they apply the factors. So they're, they're proposing to phase the pro, uh, phase the implementation of the uh, sewage of the sewage water district and uh, the way they have uh, calculated the area of the various phases uh, really does not should be refined there are some areas like parking areas there are uh, public buildings like the library like the police department like uh, the village hall that are clearly not going to be redeveloped so the, the flow that they are using right now should be the flow that's being projected there's no need to project additional development in those areas. So I think that there is definitely need a revision of their, uh, of their calculations on the flow. The um, other element that I thought was um, questionable was the fact that they have proposed a single um, uh, pump station uh, with no, re no redundancy. And they have uh, located that uh, a sewage pump station uh, right next to Lake Agawam, uh, basically almost in the flood zone. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, we were very lucky with Sandy that he didn't hit us. Uh, but I, I think that there is no question that, uh, you know, another hurricane will come, there will be some flooding. And I think to, to locate the main uh, sewage, treatment plant, uh, sewage uh, pump station okay. next to Lake Agawam, I'm not sure it's the, the wisest uh, decision. 
um, and I think also the system itself should have uh, multiple pump stations, not just one, because then you have a single point of uh, if it, you know, there is no redundancy, and then if there's an issue, uh, it blocks completely the entire system. Um, the other um, thought was to. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure about the phasing of the project. I understand that there is a, a desire to uh, to try to address Jobs Lane and Main Street uh, in, in, a quick, in a quicker way, but I'm not sure that there is really, I, I would like to see an analysis of why phasing, uh, there's any advantage to phasing the project. Why not do the entire project at once and then schedule it in a way, but I'm not sure there is a need uh, to do it in phase. Um, you know, the other, th like, uh, also I was questioning that if we are really uh, serious about uh, addressing the issues with Lake Agawam, I I'm not sure why the phase was we, nothing was being handled, anything west of uh, Windmill Road, or, you know, in the phasing diagram. So, um, and then also when, when the, their cost evaluation, uh, you know, they, they mentioned uh, some costing, but there's really no backup whatsoever. There is no quantity associated with the cost that they are mentioning. Um, I think there should be some kind of backup on how they are derived those uh, uh, cost figures, uh, at least quantify it so we can uh, uh, a little bit uh, analyze it. So I think that really, I think at this juncture, I think we should have a, a meeting with H2M and uh, so that we can uh, uh, better clarify our expectations of what their study should be and, and how we can uh, uh, really evaluate it. Right, I, I would just, my, my only comment, Mark, and I think you're right. I think we do need to have a meeting with H2M and go through all these comments and make sure we, we think it's complete. I guess two things I would say, one is the reason for the location of the pumping station was because it is property currently owned by the village as the former Dosher property. It was acquired by CPF and you can use CPF land for a pumping station. So we may wanna look at whether, or have them look at whether the land the village owns within the village core that it could use. Um, and then, um, and you know, one thing we have talked about it from time to time is potentially using one of the parking lots. Yes. For a pumping station. So we'll look at that. The second is um, when H2M agreed to um, do this report on a significantly reduced budget, um, we agreed that the, um, that the first phase would not include a, um, a true budget for the plant. Um, so that would be part of the next phase of work. But I think that even though the, even I'm not asking for a, a really a detailed budget, but at least some backup of how they are deriving those numbers, right. that they are just not, uh, you know, there should be. Um... Now, aside from this, you know, we, um, I met also with the Clean Water Committee uh, Rob Coburn, who I believe actually may be in attendance uh, in the waiting room in this meeting, and also Tom Luthen, and we uh, <clears throat> and we also had a meeting with uh, Chris Gobler, mm -hmm. and the Clean Water Committee is also suggesting to update the last study from Dr. Gobler uh, in terms of the quality of the Lake Agawam and what what our Lake Agawam and also Old Town Pond, and to try to update the study and to emphasize and to clarify and to make sure that the need to, of the sewer system is there. So that we, when we apply for grants, we will be able to apply grants under the uh, clean, water, uh, clean water quality. And, Can I follow uh, up on that? And it just, and I, I, I'm not as, I will have to speed obviously as a couple of the members, but do we have stated goals? I'm just curious, what are the stated goals? Um, obviously, <coughs> like Agawam is one, but is there are specific um, county needs that would require us to, to do this. And yeah, there, to make there, that more clearly. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very good way to phrase it. So 
the county is actually requiring all the villages on the East End to look at this issue. Um, they they first did it by um, they they first were in, in encouraging. They're basically now re requiring it. And again, the, the those of you who have watched the Southampton Press panels know there was a panel. I believe it was last week in East Hampton. They're going through the same study, uh, the same process we are, many of the same issues. Um, but they do believe, um, as I think we have over the years, that it is not feasible for the village to continue to basically allow wastewater into, into freshwater re resources, but also um, that to have a viable future for these business districts, you have to diversify uses. Um, and so I think something that was identified in the um, Aaron Krantz exit report six or seven years ago, um, and is still the case, is um, really the need to have additional residential units, or I should say um, re residential units within the village center, and then the importance of wet uses such as um, restaurants or or other entertainment venues um right. there are there are a number of actually existing residential permits that cannot be used because the health department would not allow them to be used um there's uh, also no ability to create new re residential uses in the village center um the trustees again today emphasized as a strong policy objective getting additional residential units in the village center, both affordable units and units for seniors and others who want to stay in the village and may not want to have um, the burden of a house. Um, so I think those are the objectives. Uh, if I can add one is that really all of basically all of the restaurants in the village business center are grandfathered conditions. You do not have the, the required distance between the septic tank and the water table that's required under the present codes. So everything is grandfathered. So nobody else, who, if you don't have a restaurant right now, you cannot open any wet use within the village. The water table is rising, the, the, the water is right there. And so, you can't move a use either. So yes. if you have a restaurant at 12 Main Street and you want to move it to 14 Main Street, that's not allowed. Yes. Because the grandfather is specifically for that space. Yes. Uh, so those I think are the objectives and without a doubt, you know, it's both, it's because of the unique geography, I shouldn't say unique because it turns out East Hampton has a very similar ge geography, which I was not aware of. You know, we have a village business district that basically feeds right into an adjacent resource like Agawam. Right. So, and they have a business district that also feeds directly into freshwater resources. Um, so that's, so I would say there's also a new goal, Eldon, which was interesting today, which is, um, you know, there was a lot of talk at the panel today about the need to improve village center infrastructure, streets, <laughs> sidewalks, bearing the power lines, um, and a number of trustees commented on, um, which I think I mentioned at the last meeting, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, West, West Hampton Beach used the opportunity of creating a sewer district to do a, to, to do a pretty significant um, reinvestment in their, uh, in Main, Main Street, in the parking lots, they buried the power lines. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, it is a really distinct departure from what it used to look like. And it's definitely, I think, you know, turned out very successfully for them in terms of creating new energy for their merchants. So I think the trustees today were also looking at using, which we've talked about for a very long time, using the opportunity of putting in sewers to finally make the repairs to the parking um, lots and Main Street and Jones Lane. I mean, Bob, Bob Essay has been talking about the power lines <laughs> since I've been on the, since I got in the co commission 12 years ago. So I think that's the other thing is it fits within a program of infrastructure investment. Right. And also if I can add that uh, 
uh, along those lines, it's actually throughout the county that uh, and now Steve uh, Steve Ballone and Peter Scully are uh, are re have they got a measure passed through the the county regulations and they're amending what's called the Appendix A of the health. Uh, code of the health department uh, code, which deals with uh, small uh, sewage treatment or uh, wastewater uh, uh, systems in village business centers, and uh, they are, uh, so the, there's a new code that's going to come out early December, and in this new code there was a, uh, an appendix A which dealt with small sewage treatment facility up to 15,000 gallons per day. And they are uh, raising that threshold from 15,000 gallons per day to 30,000 gallons per day if it is located within a, a, a central business core. And they will also reduce the setback requirements uh, around uh, that uh, sewage treatment plant. So this is also another something else that we should really wait. Uh, we should wait until those regulations come out in early December to really review and take a direction uh, for for us because I think it it may be very applicable. See, our uh, initially we had calculated that the the flow for the village business district was in the vicinity between let's say 100 to 120 thousand gallons per day, so that would be the equivalent of three or four mini little plants that could be strategically located within the village business center and then handle uh, uh, the sewer. So, so this is relatively newer that they're allowing those mini. Yes. Yes, it's passed a couple of weeks ago. So yes, it came out in the press exactly a few weeks ago, and uh, and and the regulations I've been in touch with the health department uh, are, are going to come out early December. They are still working on them. So this is this is a, like a really a game changer, because uh, it's not we're not talking about IA system. We're talking to actual you know, STPs, mini STPs, sewage treatment plant that can, we can treat it to whatever standard that we want. And uh, they will allow this to be up to 30,000 gallons when it's in village business core. I mean, I, the, what I would add to this discussion, and I know we've talked about it before, is, is a, a plan, a pr planning perspective that's not just uh, technical and engineering, but that is about land use and economics, because a lot of the goals we just mentioned really are kind of economic and other policy. Um, and, you know, flow studies alone are not going to really tell us about what's the need for housing, what's the opportunity for housing, what kind of housing are you likely to get, what kind of restaurants are you likely to get, will the infrastructure improvements you know, help businesses, how does the actual economics for a business change? I know right now some of them have to pay for pump outs, what will they have to pay into the new system? I, you know, I think that's all stuff that H2G is not going to answer because that's not what they do. And I think that's what James Lima will do. And I think it's really imperative that we jump on that James Lima study and answer all those other questions. I don't think we have to slow this down a lot, but I think we should answer those. Because if I'm, you know, if I run a business on Main Street, I'd like to know how economically does this impact me. Uh, I think that's important. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. But I, I don't think that uh, the the addition of residential in the village business district is such a straightforward and clear uh, answer. I think uh, with residential, you have uh, uh, solid waste issues. You have uh, there are many other issues that come along, and you know, I don't know how. You mean not straightforward from a tactical point of view, from a sewage point of view? Or no, from from from, a, from an urban planning point of view, and whether yeah, well, it, you know, it, whether it, do we want to have, you know, the workforce housing smack in the center of the village? Also, I mean, those are all the questions. Um, but I think if you're able to now apply for permits that you couldn't apply for before, you know, I I think that, and if if we're if we're if we're committing some level of public funding or whatever the funding mechanism is, I think we should have a clear understanding of, you know. All yeah, I agree. I, I think, um, you know, when the commission looked at North Sea Road, 
um, when there was a, requ a request, a private request that we rezone North Sea Road from office to uh, retail, you know, which we were not in favor of. One of the things I think many of us commented at the time is if the, if you didn't have the issue we now have with wastewater, those properties on North Sea Road, those very large, very lightly used properties are obvious properties for yeah, residential housing units. I mean, Absolutely. Best properties for multiple housing units in the I, building. I, yeah, I, completely, I completely agree with that. You know, you could still walk into the village, they're large, you could still have green space. I mean, they're, they're actually perfect for that. Yes. But you currently can't, can't, can't do that. Including, so including the property the that's owned by the village. Right. So it does shift the decision making from, in a way, from the county to the village, because then we can decide that as opposed to the county. Um, Bob, are you on? Did you want to say something? Is Bob? I think, I think he's muted. It looks like he's muted. Yes. <clears throat> Let me see if I can yeah. do anything about that. Hold on one second. So I think that, or are the other members um, supportive? I mean, I, I think the trustees are supportive at this point. It was really just kind of a funding issue to get the, um, the study going to look at, you know, I think, I think they originally started looking at the hospital, but I think we talked about looking at this basically whatever the sewer boundaries are, which you know, is connected from a policy perspective, maybe to the hospital, mm -hmm. and to look at all those, those issues and just understand um, what the change in economics would be. And I think it's a great opportunity as well, because as more people are uh, potentially moving to the village full time, yep. we'd like to see that there's an opportunity to have more and, and better amenities which yes. could, some of the restaurants have actually, you know, not in the beginning of the summer, but towards the end, we're actually doing well. There might be, you know, more opportunities for those kinds of businesses. So I think there's a lot of positive, but we should just get it right. Yep. Yes. I mean, there's a, that, that new facility that Peter Moreno is developing, I think, uh, you know, will be another magnet to the village. Yep. You know, once we are redevelop the old parish, you know, once the, the movie theater gets redeveloped, I think there's a lot of question marks that, that we should really plan for. Right. Bob, are you back on? Yeah, can, can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Good, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I, I was listening to your thing. I read the uh, Light Tower report. Um, they basically want to put a gravity system in. Uh, they had calculated all the flows and stuff like that. Again, you're probably more familiar with it th than I would be, but they're calculating um, for the 140 stores that they want to hook up to it, they're calculating uh, 60,000 uh, GP flow um, initially for the flow going in. And uh, from the treatment plant, the, the collection point uh, next to Lake Agawam, it seems like both places want to put it there, which is the lowest point in the village, and then using a low, uh, losing a pressure main to pump it to the hospital. <clears throat> they also stated in here the hospital plant wouldn't need that much updating to accommodate the additional uh, uh, flow from the village. Um, the construction bug, bu construction time, they said if they started this project, they, they think it could do it within six months um, of doing this sewer system. They also gave us a construction cost of $7.8 million, which also includes a 10% contingency funds. One of the things that concerns me in the process is that when you get to the bottom of Nugent Street, Windmill Lane, and the bottom of Job's Lane, that's a very high water table in there. And they mentioned in their report that they, they could be running into a water problem, in which case they might have to put a low pressure system in that area. <clears throat> the other thing I looked at um, in this, uh, let me just, <clears throat> Oh, on was on page 17 where uh, the village gets into a partnership with the sewer, dist, sewer, sewer company as far as running it. But the thing I got into the most was the tax exempt funds, and that was starting on page 20 and ran on to uh, page 21. 
and uh, they estimate the 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 capital of being 338,000 debt load for 30 years. Um, the question I had in there is that uh, they said here the bond should be it should be sold to either a few select investors or more generally to a, a wider group of individuals at the time of offering based on the sole objective of achieving the absolute lowest cost of project. As a village resident, I'd like to get involved in picking up one of these bonds, <clears throat> and I'm sure other people would like to, <clears throat> instead of just giving it to a few select people. <clears throat> um, the other thing that was mentioned in here, the cost of hooking up to the sewer system. If you run the sewer system down Hampton Road, Nugent Street, Windmill Lane, Main Street, and Job's Lane, all these sewer systems are in the back of the buildings. So the, the, each individual owner would have to start putting a sewage ejector system to take the sewage flow that's set up in their building and pump it to the front and back out to the street. Now, this could be a very costly thing. Some of the buildings, I think, would be, I'm just doing an approximate about 5000 <clears throat> to do the, the hookup to an individual. If you get to more elaborate systems where you have to have dual pumps and alarm system, you can go 10 to 15,000. And they also mentioned that uh, in the report, the village might want to help out these uh, um, different owners as far as uh, hooking up as well as abandoning the septic system. Again, that's going to be a costly item. Bob, to abandon a septic system, do you technically have to fill it with sand, or what do you what do you do with it? Do you... Uh, well, either way, filling it with sand or digging it out, probably to, because all basically you have there is you have a cement ring. You could fill it with sand. <clears throat> you'd have to pump it out and then fill it with sand. Now, whether the health department, you'd have to check with the health department whether they want you to pump it out. Now, my building, no, you have um, to pump it out. Yeah, this, the, there's water in the septic tanks all the time. Depends on how how Lake Agawam is. It just keeps going up and down. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. That's what we were saying before, is that this area does not perk. The, the, you, you... No, it's, they're just like collection tanks. Exactly. Right, right. And I see. The, yeah, I collection see. tanks are extremely unhealthy because the yeah. bacteria yeah. breeds in, in those tanks in a way that it's totally very unhealthy. Yeah, One I of see. the things, the other thing I noticed in here on page 24, it says um, a fixed service fee for recovery of the cost of capital on the rate basis. Uh, variable gallons uh, per gallon are charged for uh, recovery of operating depreciation and related taxes. Um, there's a couple of questions I had in here is that I know that the initial cost of putting the sewer system in is going to be borne by the property owners. But then they also say in here, there's 303 other property owners that are not going to be hooked up onto this that are also going to have to pay a cost of $115.17 per month. Um, I have feelings that those 303 are going to have some objections to this. <laughs> um, they also, I looked up to find out what this whole thing would cost us, and I finally found it. They're estimating the cost of operation plus the debt removal is going to be $615,000 uh, a year for the sewer system to operate, and, you know, to cover the cost of re, uh, paying the financing for doing it, plus the oper operations of it. Now, that's only for 140 uh, residents. There's still 303 that are not hooked up to this. Um, right, so I guess, um, Eldon, uh, sorry, Bob, to two, two, two comments, one is, um, the at the last meeting and that's reflected in the new h2f report i think we were pretty clear that as a commission we thought these lines really have to run in the back through the parking lots because that would allow the property owners to connect through whatever they now have and wouldn't require all the changes to their the buildings which seemed economically to be very difficult um what he <laughs> Sorry. The th thing that interests me is is when Mark gave that report about putting in uh, the help, the county is now going to allow smaller sewer treatment plants. That would be ideal because yes. then you could put one in 
in Joe's Lane area behind all those stores to collect there and possibly yes. picking up some stuff across the street as well as putting in one behind Main Street to collect Nugent Street and the other half of Job's Lane and possibly a third over in the parking lot to pick up Hampton Road and maybe some of the other places. Yes, and one behind the movie theater, let's say. Right. Where, you, where, where you could pump to, where you could put, pump up to. Yeah, I think that also, I think that the, the report from Light Tower that, I mean, from what they had mentioned, I, I think that there is a, I have a real issue about uh, increasing the capacity of the sewage treatment plant at that location. Uh, and for, this for various reasons. The, the first reason being that the capacity of that uh, facility is not related to how much they use of the, how much flow do they actually use. It, it's related <coughs> to the number of beds that they are permitted for. There's a direct relationship with the, the, the plant and the number of beds. So for them to, uh, to uh, relinquish any capacity as to the wastewater, they will need to reduce the number of beds. And I'm not sure they're willing to do that. Paul, and Paul, Paul, I, and I, I mean, think Mark, in, in this report, they also broke it down what the hospital was doing, is how much flow was going in over several years. If you read the report, you'll find yes. in there where they broke it down um, every year what how much flow was actually going into the sewer treatment plant. Yes, I understand. But the idea is that how much they are using is one thing. But how much they are, the, the, the size of that sewage treatment plant is related to the number of beds for which they are uh, permitted for. So you know, if, if you reduce the capacity of the sewage treatment plant allocated to that hospital, they will need to relinquish and reduce their number of beds. And they may not, they may not be willing to do that. It just happened that they are not using that much capacity. Mark, they, they actually, in fairness to Light Tower, I think the hospital has made clear that their current license bed count is not something they will ever see again. Be, just because of the change in, in, just because of the change in med medicine. So they use a fraction of those beds now and they didn't see a scenario where they used that amount of beds again. So I think that's, but let me, let me okay. actually make a more general point is, um, and I think this point has come across over and over again from H2M, which is we need to talk to, the village needs to talk directly both to the hospital and the Sapphire County Sewer Authority before we make a decision on our side that the hospital plant is the appropriate place to use. Exactly, and also the, right now the, the plant is a private plant Correct. dealing with a single facility. Yes. And, and what we want to take there is public sewage. It's, 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 a, it's a different uh, uh, entity, it's a different facility, it's a different types of treatments that are required. And then the third point is that I personally think that, you know, to add 60,000 gallons per day to a facility, so let's say that they would become like a 90,000 gallon facility at that location, you know, it's still a sewage treatment plant and across the street, you have the, some of the most luxurious development. Uh, uh, it's, it's, the, it's the, you know, you, when you go to Fort Dune Estates, you go to the new Keene development, you go there and you're going to have a sewage treatment plant right in the way. The sewage treatment plants need to be serviced. You know, every month they're going to have to clean it. Every month at that, you know, at that point, there's a smell. There's no question about it. So <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> you know, big Mark, I, I have worked in the one in the Southam Hospital and also the one at the uh, uh, rehab center up on the highway. Yes. And between the two plants are like night and day. <laughs> yes. As far as the technology has gone. I right. mean, oh, they, right. they've improved them so much. Yeah. Yes, no, I agree, I agree with you. But still, you know. You, you, I brought this up when we first had this sewer treatment plant. I was all in favor of it until where you put the sewer treatment plant. And yes. wherever you put it, at one place we had it was right near where the, um, I think Bill Hatrick was trustee at the time, was going to be near with him. And he was deadly against it. And um, I think that's going to be our major problems. Um, I also mentioned at one of the meetings that the village owns 20 acres up opposite the Tuckahoe School up in there. That would be a, and there's nothing up in that area, and that would be an ideal place to put it. Or you do a temporary to the hospital in the village 
until a hospital gets built up in Shinnecock Hills and you work with them to make sure they build a big enough facility and we could pump everything. And when we go up that way, we can pick up along the stuff along Hill Street. Yeah, right. that's that's what I'm that's what... Mark, I'm sorry. Can I just <laughs> yeah. just a second? So I I just want to say that there was an extensive study done by H2M along with Gary Gillespie of all the property that the village owns, um, and that was in the, and for various you know and any each, each property had unique characteristics. None of those um, they felt were appropriate for for a sewer plant. So I, I just want to go back to I think Mark Mark came up with a site that actually works and the town was excited about whether we want to go ahead with it or not the whole other thing but you know we have done a study of all the available sites. <coughs> now the point that Mark made which is the county now allowing smaller facilities and the possibility of locating smaller facilities in village-owned parking lots in the village center is a very interesting idea. Yes. <laughs> what we looked at. Um, can I ask? Does um, anyone else on the commission have any comments about the report or the issue? My only comment. Is I'd I like to ask about Eldon's um, inclusion, I guess, of uh, economic and cultural um, aspects to. To, to the implementation of a sewer. How, how would you go about that, Eldon? Well, I, I think we, we, we'd gone through the study, I don't know, nine months ago uh, to an RFP to hire James Lima. And I think that his firm um, looks at economic planning as well as land use planning and the intersection between those two. So I think the thought is that James, we would take the James Lima study and expand it to look not just at the hospital zone, but look at the full sewer zone. <laughs> yes. Kind of start exactly. to, to answer well, that, some of the questions. You know, that's like very interesting. Uh, that that interests me. Yeah. And then I, I think we can have a very, that. we can have a public to, discussion to around have that to be a significant part of whatever our recommendation is. Yes, and I would include in that rec the, that study that in the, it would be the rezoning of uh, North Sea Road. That in case, in, in the event we are considering the site on County Road 39 and uh, North Sea Road, that maybe that area could be rezoned into uh, possibly residential or- uh, Certainly should be should be looked at as a possibility. Maybe yes. they look at it to see if the feasibility, you know, that study may not be the final zoning study, but just list that as a, as a topic. Yes. But I wanted, as I'm listening to all this, I'm thinking, how do we move it forward? Because I'm sure we could keep poking lots of holes in the existing study, but short of paying them more money to answer all our questions, um, you know, I'm wondering just how to maybe we should set a very specific set of questions and see if either H2M can answer those technically or which one of those would drop to you know, this, maybe this James Lima study. Yeah, James. I, think we've got to, I think we should move it forward. I, I do, I do too, and that's excellent. And and Mark, your comments about the H2M study that was presented, you could do bullet points and go back to H2M and say, okay, we'd like more clarification on, on all yes. of your points. So if there is another meeting or Zoom or otherwise, that they are prepared to address those concerns of yours in Maybe a very organized way Maybe. and also to bring up the possibility of the december thing with the thirty thousand gallons yes. and the uh the setback um alleviation so to also address that i was just going to say that maybe it's even more expedient just to um if maybe mark put this into a email and we just email them and let them yeah, respond. Yeah, right, exactly. Email. Yeah. All right. Well, I can prepare it and circulate it first among us. Great. And, Mark. And, and Alvin, you can email the um, the people that did the study for the <coughs> hospital if they would also look at um, inclusion of, um, you know, North Sea Road and, you know, per, um, apropos of having a sewer system, right. if they would consider. Yeah. Well, I'll do the same. Maybe I'll I'll circulate a list of um, of topics that James Lima might be looking at, and and see if anyone has any comments on that. 
I could see how that impacts the right. scope. I got to go, guys. Okay. Mark. Right. Thanks. Mark, when you yes. go over this, I'd like there's two things I'd like to know. As a yes, landlord, sir. I'd like to know how much cost am I going to be incurred in my land taxes? Mm -hmm. And the second thing, what my tenants' fees will be uh, with the sewer system. You know, do they have a general idea how much this is going to cost, you know, them a month for this? I know it's based on gallons per minute, but is there anything else hidden in there? Well, you know, there is uh, there are two costs, there's many costs, but there's a, normally it's typically uh, broken down into one, which is there is a, what's called a benefit assessment uh, at, that every property owner who is able to connect to the sewage contributes through a what's called a benefit assessment because the, whether you connect or not you have the ability to connect so there's a benefit assessment then the second charge is a, a, a connection charge and the connection charge is once you connect to it you, you know there's a another charge of connection and then there is a the third charge is the usage charge which is based on your water bill the, it's the gallons of water that come in uh, based on that water bill. Now there is, uh, you know, I was discussing with uh, Rob Coburn earlier and he was saying that he has a friend who is in Denmark and apparently in Denmark when you, they limit, uh, they, they charge the sewer charge, you know, really based on the, on the water usage and then whatever you apply for, uh, they actually restrict your water usage to whatever you ha has been agreed when you got the permits to uh, to develop that property. Well, when I read Light uh, Tower's report, it sounds like everybody, when they do the sewer system, including the ones that are, are going to pay $115.17 a month, and then on top of that, the ones that are hooked up onto it, if I'm reading this correctly, are going to be based on a per gallon usage. <clears throat> Well, the per gallon usage normally only takes care of the maintenance of the system. Right. The usage charge is, is normally is done by a not-for-profit or not-for-profit entity or for to cover the maintenance of the system. Right. But when I start looking at the figures, that they said that they needed six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars a year to to pay the debt load for cost of construction as well as the operation and maintenance of of it. <laughs> And when I look at the figures and break it down, it. Uh, uh, but they, uh, um, I look at the landowners will be paying a portion. Um, they'll be paying, like for example, I broke it down. They said thirty-eight thousand, three hundred thirty-eight thousand um, divided by one hundred and forty is like twenty-four. Say twenty-five hundred dollars a year additional in taxes per landowner, which I don't think that's too bad. Or great for for the, for the landowners, but that's still not going to cover enough to. To cover the whole debt load, so you have to get those other two figures in there to cover the six hundred fifteen thousand. Well, this is where uh, you're absolutely right. This is where, when we met with uh, uh, Dr. Gobler, that's where we want to create that component, the clean water component, so we are able to get grants right. uh, from the federal government, grants from the state under the Clean Water Act. Right, and I should state that we have. Uh, un unfortunately, if you looked at this past election. The Suffolk County has just taken the sewer treatment money and dumped I it in the general fund. That. I could <laughs> not believe that. I couldn't, oh, I couldn't believe, believe it either because I know it will never come back. I right. couldn't believe it. You know, um, know how they possibly could do that. Apply for the county. The village has applied for a, for state grant money to, for the next phase of work on the sewers um, issue. Um, that went in about a month ago. So okay. hopefully we'll get begin to get some funding. Um, just the well, because I know it's getting a little late, and Rob, Rob Coburn's been waiting. Rob, <coughs> yeah, Light, Light Tower also went into if they were able to get grant money, and how much you know grant money that we get it would also reduce our the uh, the costs down for us. The more grant money we got. Yeah, and I, and I would again just you know many years ago when H two M did their first report for us. They had an estimate of how much they could receive in grant money. Um, there were public hearings. Everyone attacked H2M, but that was completely unreal, real, uh, uh, unrealistic. The share of grant money that West Hampton Beach got was higher 
than what was in the the H2M report. So I think it was not so crazy. So Rob, do you want to? <coughs> the, the, the other thing too, Paul. Rob, Rob, can you hold for a second? Yeah. And let, let's let Rob yeah. make his comments. <laughs> Sorry, thanks. Um, a couple things. One just observation, It, it uh, and I've spoken with Mark about this a little bit, but I would agree with Mark's comment at the beginning of this meeting that Light Tower's contributions at this point, while we want to push things forward, I know you want to push things forward, it feels to me like it is the cart before the horse. And uh, I think there's still some engineering and scoping work to do. But two, two points to make, if, if I could. One is based on the, on the H2M report, which uh, Tom Lath and I have been able to, to review. One of the omissions that we want to make sure you guys understand and that we feel should be part of the comments back to H2M has to do with really completely omitting from any phase or any analysis the density that exists on Hampton Road with the 160 condominium units that are there, uh, the middle school and the high school, all in a half mile radius and all uh, straddling the northern uh, borders, the watersheds for Wickapog and Old Town Pond. Um, it, um, we're not, we don't have the expertise to understand whether that should be phase one, two or three, but to uh, give a sewer plan or commentary to the village and entirely exclude that area seems to us to be a, a pretty glaring omission. So we'd ask that either they be asked to opine on that or, or that somehow uh, you guys create that analysis. But it also strikes me in terms of ways to move forward or things that can be done, because I agree with what everyone said that the time to act is sort of now. We can study and study and have consultants, but it feels to me based on this news, very exciting news about the increase in the mini STPs uh, from 15 to 30,000 gallons, that one immediate task would be maybe H2M can do this, but to go back and look at the available plots of land again uh, that were used for the H2M study, what does the village own or what is maybe available on the market uh, for purchase or for easement uh, that, because you know, it, there's a greatly reduced footprint for these STPs. So the idea of distributing four to six mini STPs around the village uh, reduces the mains. It creates some redundancy or could create some redundancy with a little bit of networking. Um, it allows those to be located much more conveniently and discreetly. So uh, I know that's an entirely different track from what H2M has been asked to do in, in two studies, but it feels to me like that analysis of, of with Gary Gillespie maybe of the available parcels for these mini STPs. I don't know, Mark, if there's been enough described or if you need to wait for the more specific uh, regulations to come out in a month or so, but it, I was told it was going to come out, you know, early December. Okay. I mean that because there's a scenario based on the little that I know, uh, thanks to, to Mark over the last couple of weeks and a little bit of research that, you know, as I said, four to six mini sewer treatment plants at a price tag of two to $3 million a piece or something like that could be much more effectively targeted with much lower infrastructure costs, much lower disruption, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, yes. it, it's, Mark says it's a potential game changer and it may not at the end of the day be as good an option, but um, uh, it, it certainly feels like something that could be understood better pretty quickly. Mark, do you think H2M is able to answer the question of what the economics might be with, within the scope of what we've got going with them? Well, I, I think that we should definitely uh, I'll prepare those bullet points questions. And one of them is definitely a, a better study of the flows for the various areas, much more accurate based on the zoning that's in place, based on the existing facilities that are there, make a much more uh, accurate computation. Without well, doing flows. a lot of more. And then one, once we have that, then if we wait until the regulations come out early December, we'll see. And I think it's a very, very good possibility. I would see a plant, let's say, for example, uh, behind the Verizon building on one side, a plant in the in the main parking lot in the center, a plant, you know, near that uh, by Lake Agawam, a plant. Exactly. If you could develop like four or five plants like this, and, and I don't think it a, would cost more than three could, around the three put a plant, mark. You could put a plant in the old ambulance barn um, right. lot. Yeah, because the footprints of these things with reduced setbacks are relatively modest. I think we're talking about, uh, you know, a couple thousand square right, feet. Right. And also, 
because they are small like this, because they're only up to 30,000 30, gallons, you don't have that nuisance about the smell, about the, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it's not such a, you know, you don't have those issues that you have in major sewage treatment plants. But Mark, you still have the sludge collecting tanks. You that... still have the sludge collecting tank, but it acts, they are smaller. They are okay. More, they can be contained. It's not like enormous ones. That... Eduardo or Pam, do you have any comments, questions? The, the only thing I like that we, you mentioned about the electric, uh, if we're going to do it, I'd love to see as you go through the streets, they drop all the power lines under the streets so you don't have to see any of the poles or wires anymore. <laughs> Okay, Eduardo, did, were you about to say something? Well, my only comment is uh, that if we go forward, I don't think we should do a private sewer system like with a light tower. I think it should be part of the municipality. And um, I'm very interested to hear more about these mini STPs. Mm -hmm. uh, this is new technology and probably much more efficient than trying to do Know, gravity sewers and collection points and yes. things, you know, so uh, I'd be very interested to learn more about that. Well, well, the nice thing I'd like to comment, you have safety in numbers. So if one plant breaks I down, the others still keep it, functioning. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. You, you might even get approval from, from the county to connect, say, two of them into pairs. Yes. Kind of temporary redundancy. Um, uh, uh, Exactly. exactly. Pam, do you have any comments or quick questions? Can't I think you're muted. Okay. I think I have a lot of catching up to do. Okay. So I, I guess we'll get you some of the, the, the reports. Um, yes, that would be good. And and Mark Schiffert is the world's expert, so <laughs> we'll, we'll arrange after the meeting for you okay. to be able to talk to him. <laughs> so. All right. Okay. Okay, very good. So All Pam right, so is joining I, us. So the next yes. step is, Eldon, I think you were you were recommending that there be uh, that Mark, you'll email to H2M and then maybe yes. a Zoom call for those who are interested to go through their report and see which of the, those issues can be addressed. Yeah. Um, I think we're they you know we'd like to get to the trustees in in, in December. Uh, they're they're asking to to present something. So at least if if it's possible for H two M to turn something around to at least get us started, um, and then also I guess Elvin for you as the new chair to make a recommendation on the James Lima report. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna circulate for you guys um, potential scope change items if anyone has any comments, and then I can go back and see if we can get that put into the contract. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, Thank you. I think unless there are other items, that's the planning commission meeting for November. Yeah? All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. We'll adjourn. Thank you.